everybody. My name is Dave Tiefenthaler, otherwise known as Tiefsa, and I'm here to help you catch fish. Here's all the gear you need. There's the rod and reel. There is my bobber on my line. These are the hooks I really like. They're Aberdeen um, size 6 Snelled. Yeah, there you go. Uh, they're small enough to catch the little fish, but big enough to handle um, bigger fish as well. I've caught some big carp on these. And then I use wax worms. You do not have to use wax worms. You can use worms. You can use like summer sausage. Whatever bait you choose is fine. Then pliers are optional in case you have a toothy critter on your line or the hook is deep in there and you want to try and get it out. Step two is to find a spot to fish and the best way to do that is use Google Maps. I suggest using it and looking for green and blue. When those two colors are together, that means there's a park next to water. And that's where you can access the water legally. You don't have to trespass or anything like that. When you find the green and blue and there's a park there, also check local regulations to see that it is legal to fish in that area. Step three, you actually have to find the fish when you're at the place you're fishing. I suggest looking for the deeper areas or for the slower moving water. If you can find a slower moving water after fast moving water, which means like there's some ripples in the water, but then the water slows down, Fish like to hang out there because that means the fast moving water pushes the food to them and they don't have to work hard if they're in the slow moving water so they'll sit there, wait for the food to come to them and then the fish will eat. Step four, getting those fish to bite. Usually the fish that want to eat in a river are facing upriver. So let's say the current is coming down, they'll be facing upriver. They'll be put their nose into the current and they're doing that because they're looking for the bait to come by them. So what you are going to do is you would cast your bobber and your hook in front of them and then the bobber will drift by them and hopefully you see it get pulled on and then set the hook. You might have a fish. Step five, the last thing. When you have a fish, you've caught the fish, it's out of the water, there's a couple things you should do. Number one, if you are practicing catch and release, you should get your hand wet because uh, fish usually have a slimy-like coating on them and that helps protect them, keeps them healthy. So when you get your hand wet, you don't get as much slime on yourself and it's good for the fish because when you release it back into the wild, you didn't take it off of them. If you are going to keep your fish, Know the local regulations. Some fish you cannot keep, some you can, but they have to be a certain length. And also, even if there isn't a certain length, there are usually limits on how many you can keep. Every area in the world is different. Know your local regulations if you are going to keep the fish. All right, it's one thing to talk about it. Let's go see if I can do it. Let's get some fish. Wee. Here, Here's an area that I would really like. So rapids right here, and then some calm pockets right here. I bet you there's fish somewhere in here. Let's do it. Look at this, you guys. We got a little small mouth. All right, just after the rapids, you can hear it right there. And you cast into some of the slack water and then hopefully you get a fish. And there's my proof. Bobber, little Aberdeen hook. He ate my waxy. Love it, love it. All right, mm. let's get you off, buddy. Oh, there's a tiny piece of my wax worm left. There you go. That's the easiest way that I know to catch fish. Maybe you can use this to catch some fish. Let's let this guy go. There you go, little buddy. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> yes.